most neural networks run on powerful supercomputers, thousands of processors occupying entire buildings. We have brains that require massive computation, uh, which you cannot include on a self-contained body. We address the size challenge by making liquid networks. Liquid networks. So it looks like an autonomous vehicle like I've seen before, but it is a little different, right? Very different. This is an autonomous vehicle that can drive in brand new environments that it has never seen before for the first time. Most self-driving cars today rely to some extent on detailed databases that help them recognize their immediate environment. Those robot cars get lost in unfamiliar terrain. In this case, you're not relying on a huge, expansive neural network. You're running on 19 neurons, right? Correct. Computer scientist Alexandra Amini took me on a ride in an autonomous vehicle with a liquid neural network brain. We've become very accustomed to relying on big, giant data centers and cloud compute. But in an autonomous vehicle, you cannot make such assumptions, right? You need to be able to operate even if you lose internet connectivity and you cannot talk to the cloud anymore. You, your entire neural network, the brain of the car, needs to live on the car. And that imposes a lot of interesting constraints. To build a brain smart enough and small enough to do this job, they took some inspiration from nature a lowly worm called C. elegans. Its brain contains all of 300 neurons, but it's a very different kind of neuron. It can capture more complex behaviors in every single piece of that puzzle. And also the wiring, how a neuron talks to another neuron, is completely different than what we see in today's neural networks. Autonomous cars that tap into today's neural networks require huge amounts of compute power in the cloud. But this car is using just 19 liquid neurons. A worm at the wheel, sort of. Today's AI models are really pushing the boundaries of the scale of compute that we have. They're also pushing the boundaries of the data sets that we have. And that's not sustainable because ultimately we need to deploy AI onto the device itself, right? Onto the cars, onto the surgical robots, all of these edge devices that actually make the decisions. The AI worm may, in fact, turn. 